Hello and welcome back to the Tin Born. I'm Pragmatic Lee and today's video is going to be a continuation on the motorized rotary table. As you recall in the last few videos uh, I did the uh, mount for the uh, 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 stepper motor and then also did a a video kind of on the theory of, of gears and uh, and then the last video we actually cut a 40 tooth gear. That was using the uh, rotary table in the horizontal position. In the first video where I was uh, talking, where I was building the mount for the stepper motor, there were a couple comments, several comments, speculating on whether or not that would work if the uh, rotary table was in a horizontal position. Oftentimes a a rotary table will be used in a horizontal position to cut something like that, the round on the end of a piece of flat stock. Well, I decided I'd try it, or I want to try it here on this video, and I got a piece of quarter inch thick steel. It's an inch and a quarter wide, and what I've done, I've marked out the center along here. I come down from the end just a little over center, about a hundred twenty thousandths over center, and we'll set this up on the uh, on the rotary table. I'm going to go into a little bit of explanation on setup of a rotary table uh, on a mill, but not in a great amount of detail. There are dozens of videos on YouTube that talk about that specific subject of setting up a rotary table on a mill. But let's look over there at the mill now and uh, again I'll I'll cover a little bit of it and I'll cover the uh, uh, the setup of this piece of material on it. Now I'm going to be honest with you. I've already tried it. The other end has a radius cut on it. So I know it works but I want to show you folks how it works. All right, we're over at the uh, mill now, and in the previous videos, I was sitting on this surface right here. The rotary table was actually in, in a vertical position, but the workpiece was horizontal in relation to the spindle. Here's that picture again showing the previous setup for gear cutting. And the question was, could you set it up in this orientation? and use the stepper motor that we used to motorize the table to use it. So first thing I wanted to do on the setup is to be sure I'm, I'm square with the table. So this surface is a machine surface back here and I'll place the square, the machine square up against the edge of the table over here And I line this up so that it's square and mounted it down. The next thing we need to be absolutely certain of is that we're in center. Now I took the uh, uh, chuck and adapter plate that was on there before when we were cutting gears and had it set up like this. Took that off and just put this uh, fixture plate on. This fixture plate has quarter twenty uh, holes, threaded holes, on one inch centers. Now I have the probe for the coaxial indicator down in the rotary table, not this fixture plate. It really doesn't matter if the fixture plate is directly on center. What matters is the part of the rotary table here its center of rotation is on there. So let's take a look at the coaxial indicator. And we want that needle to set as still as possible. And we might be wavering a quarter of a thousandth, uh, maybe an eighth of a thousandth on each side of, of zero there. So I've got the table locked down. The mill table is going to stay in its position. 
Alright, let me take this out and I'll bring you right back. I've got the coaxial indicator out now and I've got a, uh, a just a piece of 3-8 stock with a, a point on the end of it. And I'm that little mark that I put in there or uh, center punch that I put in, I'm going to line that up and just use that to hold it in place. Now, I want this workpiece to be in line with the table, perpendicular to the uh, surface, machine surface on the uh, rotary table to make it in line with the uh, mill table. So what I'm going to do, take a little block and set down here. I can't use my square against that surface there. It's they're not on the same plane. So I need something to extend this out. So I set this little block back here. And this piece is wide enough that it will mate with the uh, rotary table machine, machine surface. So I'll put that up there and use this C-clamp simply to, to hold that in place. Now I can take my machinist square, line that up, and move the workpiece around, being sure this stays against this surface and this against that side of the square. And then take a couple of toe clamps and clamp it down. So now the workpiece is secured in place and it is in line with the uh, mill table perpendicular to the rotary table. Now I need to take this out and put a 3 16 end mill in. Okay, I have the 3 16 end mill in now. And what I want to do is reposition the mill table which of course the rotary table is mounted to, I want to reposition it just off the outside edge here. Now this workpiece actually measured after cleaning up the edges 1.246. So half of that is 0 0.623. The 3 16 end mill, half of that is 0 0.094. And then I want just, just a little bit of clearance off this outside edge. What I don't want to happen is that when the rotary table comes around that it digs in to that edge. So I'm going to give it about 13 thousandths clearance. Oh, that's each side. That's about 6 thousandths uh, uh, per side. And I did that just because that rounds out to 730 thousandths. And so on the DRO, I'm coming out 730 thousandths. And I'll lock the table down right there. Now, I'm going to lower that end mill down. And excuse the head just a moment. But I'm seeing just a little bit of clearance on that back side there, which is exactly what I wanted. All right, I'm going to come back up. Now I'm going to swing the camera around and show you my program again. Now I don't think it's necessary to go over to the computer and do screen captures of this. But this is my Raspberry Pi set up on a stand over here on, it's actually on a tripod. But I got it right next to the mill. And in the last video you saw me use this section of the program for teeth divisions. Up here on, on this program or this exercise today, I'm going to use the degrees and I'm going to put in 180 degrees. Now when I hit this go button over here, the table is going to start rotating. I've got it in the plus position now or plus direction, meaning the rotary table is going to turn clockwise. When we get to the end of that 180 degrees, 
I will lower the end mill down a little bit more and I'll change this from positive to negative and then the table will go counterclockwise. So let's put that on positive. Just know when you see this table move I've hit the go button and since you saw this program uh, last week in the last uh, uh, video I actually added another feature to it called uh, e-stop, emergency stop, because guess what? I needed it when I was testing this out. So if I hit, have to hit the e-stop for any reason, I'll let you know that's what I hit. But otherwise, I'll simply hit the go button. The table will go in one direction. I'm sorry. Yeah, it'll go in a clockwise direction. Then I'll hit the change the direction to the minus, hit the go button, and it'll go in the other direction. Alright, so I have the program set at 180 degrees now in the positive direction. And I'm going to leave this end mill up above it right now. And I'm going to hit the go. You can see the table is moving in the clockwise direction. And this is no speed demon. I'm taking it slow and easy. Uh, it's just one set speed I have for the, uh, for the stepper motor. And I'm using a relatively small end mill. So I'm going to let this come on around and then I want to be sure I got clearance on this back side. And there's the 180. Let me run this down over there. Look at it from this side. And I've got just about six thousandths clearance is all there. I'm going to change it to the minus direction and hit go. Now the only thing I'm going to do here is just try to touch off the end mill. A little higher speed. Alright, so I've got the end mill touched off now. I'll let this come around to the other, back to the starting point. Okay, there's two ways that you can cut a radius on the end down here. And again, as I've said a couple times already, there are numerous videos on YouTube on how to do setups. But one way to cut this radius would be to move the table down to where it's uh, off this edge here. And leave the end mill in the center. That way as it rotates, it will get just a minor... Let me get my pointer it will get just a little bit off of each corner. Then you move the table over just a little bit and it get a little bit off of each corner. The advantage to that would be that it uh, uh, you could lower the end mill all the way down so that you're making your full cut each time. The disadvantage of that is you're having to move the, the table over a little bit at a time and you would only be able to cut in one direction at least on my smaller setup as I have here you would only be able to use conventional milling if you tried to do Klein milling it would jerk the table too much to me the advantage of this is that I move it over and I will cut I don't have to move this any at all or don't have to move the uh, mill table at all. It's just a, a matter of lowering the end mill. The disadvantage is I can't take the full cut th at one time. At least I'm not going to try it with a uh, 3 16 end mill. Now I probably should have put a sacrificial piece under this. As a matter of fact I'm going to stop for a minute and do this setup again 
with a sacrificial piece of aluminum. When I originally made these uh, fixture plates, I told myself they would be sacrificial, but they're working too good. So I don't want to cut into it if I don't have to. I'm satisfied with this setup. So give me just a minute to put a, uh, I had it laid out, I just forgot to put it in there. But I'm just gonna put this piece of aluminum under there and line it all up just like I've got it now. All right, I'm set back up right where we left off. The only difference is I've got a sacrificial piece of flat bar underneath it. Now, I'm not going to be doing anything on this program or in this routine as far as moving the table at all other than hitting the go button over here on the program. And then when we get to the end of each half cycle, I'll lower the end mill down a little bit. But I don't have to move the uh, rotary table nor the mill table. To me, the advantage of making this sweep like this uh, instead of gradually moving on the x-axis. <clears throat> Where I see the biggest advantage of this is I, I can cut in both directions. Since there's material on both sides of my end mill, I won't be uh, conventional or I won't be climb milling or conventional. I'll be doing both which will cancel each other out. So I will take about 15 thousandths at the time so let me get this down. And this first pass around here, I'm going to let this run in real time. So over here on the Raspberry Pi, I've got the 180 degrees, and I've got it in the positive direction, or the plus direction. So I'll hit the go. Okay, and that stopped entirely on its own. I did not do a thing. And again, another advantage of having this motorized with the correct mass is that you don't overrun it when you're turning the handle, which is very easy to do. Now I'll come down another 15 thousandths. Over here on the Raspberry Pi, I'm gonna change to the, to the negative direction and simply hit the go button. Lower the end mill. Change the direction to positive. Hit the go button. All right, I'm running this uh, 3 16th end mill at 1120 RPMs, and I might could take a little bit more than 15 thousandths depth at the time, but I just don't want to take a chance on, try, on feeding it too fast and breaking that end mill. So I'm gonna zoom you in again real close so that you can see the cut going on. For one more pass here. And then I'll bring you back when we get a little bit closer. 
you can see we've we made about a third the way down now. Sixty thousand well about a about a fourth the way I guess. One more thing I will say, uh, the lock, the lock down here on the table, I just barely got it snug and I got plenty of lubricant on this ring around here. I'm just keeping that snug just to take out any possible backlash that might be in the table. All right, I'll bring you back when we get closer to the end. Okay, I'm pretty sure this last pass here is going to clean it up. And that's on the on the Z-axis DRO is showing 255,000, which this piece was just shy of 250,000. So, one last time we'll change it to the minus direction and hit the go button and just a little oil on this last pass yeah it's cut our corners off And getting into the sacrifice, sacrificial piece of aluminum a little bit, which is exactly what it was supposed to do. Get this piece out. We'll take a little closer look at it. Alright, I'm going to deburr this. And we'll meet over at the workbench in a minute to, to look at it a little bit closer. But, but before I do anything, I want you to see how there's no overrun on that. And we've got a, a nice finish around this outside parameter. One of the issues I've always had with using a handle on the rotary table to do something like this was occasionally you'll, you'll stop just a little bit, reposition your hands. And of course, you know, anytime you dwell with an end mill, you're going to leave a mark on that end down there. So for now, I'm going to set this to, a side, to the side. I'm going to set up another piece on there, and after I get the setup done, I'll bring you back and show you what we're going to do with it.
Okay, I've just cut four slots and four skips in three different rows on this do-nothing piece. I'm going to bore a couple holes just off center in here. And then after I clean up these, all these burrs, I'll see if, over at the workbench if we can turn this into a, a little do-something. So stick with me. We'll meet at the workbench in just a minute and do a recap on this whole video. Okay, hopefully I've uh, answered the question that some of you had as far as whether that uh, stepper motor would have enough uh, ump to it to use the uh, rotary table in the uh, vertical position. And I th again, I think we've answered that. Uh, this turned out really nice. It's some fairly hard material. Uh, but as I say, I started with that center mark, set it up, and moved about six thousandths over on each side, and then made these cut arounds. It's left an extremely smooth surface on there, which I've always had issues before with, as I said over there, uh, with dwell, where I would try to reposition my hand to turn it, and the end mill would dwell just a little bit. And you know what happens when an end mill dwells. It'll leave a mark there. But this turned out really nice. I've cleaned it up a little bit. Also, by having that little bit of clearance on each side, I didn't cut into the edges, which will happen if you're using the handle and turn just, you know, just a degree or, or two too much in each direction. So I think that turned out really nice and will be another enhancement to the uh, rotary table or another use for the enhanced rotary table. Now what about this piece? As I say, it's set over there on the mill, it's basically a do-nothing piece. It's just something I had in my mind and thought I would try. And as I was thinking about this in my head, uh, it brought back a, a bit of a memory uh, from childhood days. Uh, my parents were born in 1925, so they missed the bad part of the Depression, but my grandparents didn't. And in raising my parents, I think my parents learned from them that if anything's got a potential use at any point in time, hang on to it. And that must be where I got my hoarding from as well because I don't like to throw anything away. But one thing that we always had in our house, my mama would never throw away a piece of clothes, or my grandmother's, either one of them, would never throw away a piece, piece of old clothing without cutting the buttons out of them or off of them. I've even known my mother and at least one of my grandmothers to cut zippers out of uh, uh old clothes and save the zippers and it wasn't so much that the buttons were buttons and zippers were that expensive it's just you didn't jump in the car and run to town to buy two or three buttons you threw them in a button jar something similar to this and as, as I said I was I was thinking this up in my mind it re kind of reminded me of a button so I put these two center holes right here in it and I've got a, a string threaded to, through it. And I'm going to see if I can replicate what my mama used to do to try to entertain a boring kid that was home from school because of uh, snow or whatever. In the summertime, we never got bored in the house. We always had something to do on the farm. But she'd take an old button and thread a string through it. Let me see if I can get this one going. Yeah, I know it's simple, but it provided a lot of entertainment for a bored five or six year old. Take an old piece or take a piece of tobacco twine and thread it through a button. 
And once you got that rhythm, you'd sit there for hours. Or we would sit there for hours playing with a do-nothing. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.